So as far as goals for your career, what do you think? Some acting, some modeling, maybe even be a movie star one day? Okay, okay. Well, uh, a lot of actresses and models get their start in these exercise videos, and I know you're going to do what it takes, right? Okay, so why don't we start off by just saying your name for the camera. Hi, my name is Amber Jones. Okay, Amber, and how old are you? I'm 19 years old. 19 fucking years old. That's great. Amber, why don't you stand up and show us your tight little body. Do a little spin for us. Matt, can you get off the fucking elliptical? Amber, can we do that a little slower? Great. Great. And Amber, how do we know if you're going to be the next big porn star? Porn? No. Okay, let's try that a little different. Let's do it a little more surprised, a little more vulnerable. Porn? Porn? Amber, come on. You knew it was this kind of audition, right? This is an adult exercise video. This is a nude exercise video. Wait, I'm not going to. Look, all I'm saying is maybe if we focused our message a little bit more and didn't let just anyone speak, we would reach a wider audience. How can we say that we believe in free speech and democracy and that we're fighting for these ideals, and then say, we're the ones who should decide who can speak and who can't. Mm. Anyone who wants to speak, should speak. We try that every time. And every time, the meeting gets hijacked by the goddamn tree sitters and the 9-11 truthers. And as soon as they start talking, nobody else pays attention. I'm not saying that they don't have a right to speak, or that they shouldn't speak, or even that I disagree with them. I just think that if we want the rest of this fucking campus to remember that our country is still at war, we need to try something new. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Would you consider speaking at the rally? You've got a lot more to say than anybody in there. I don't even think I should be coming to these meetings. Think about it. I'll see you work tomorrow. Bye. How'd it go? That's this month and last month. I'm all paid out. That's kind of fun, too. So you think you'll call this one? He was pretty cute. I can't even think about dating right now. I don't know, Ash. I think it would do you some good. It's too soon. I mean, what if I started crying or something? I'm not ready yet. I think you should give it a try. You should get back to work. Hey, Ash, you get an email from this Dan guy? I don't know. I haven't checked my email all day. He was friends with Phil in the army. He's got a two week leave and he wants to come meet us. Yeah, Adam and I are gonna give him a hero's return. Take him out drinking. See if we can get some stories of all the hygiene motherfuckers Phil killed before they got him. I got Phil with one hell of a soldier.
not going to pass up this opportunity. Just make $1,000 having some fun with our boy Matt over here and show off your great body. A thousand dollars? Phil? So is this the first time since I left you? Right here on this couch, in front of the camera. Any socks? Yes. So I wasn't? I felt pretty good. Not like with you, though. Are you upset with me? No, not really. I mean, look at it this way. It's not like you killed anyone. Well, how many people did you kill? I don't know. A lot. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. You know that, you know that feeling you get when you hear yourself on the answering machine for the first time? Yeah. And yeah, I fucking hate that. Yeah. And like, you didn't have to leave a message, but you did anyway because you felt like you needed to do something, anything, and. It was probably a really fucking bad idea, but you just fucking went ahead and did it. And then you felt like shit afterwards, and then it kind of felt good after, you know? And then you're hearing yourself come through this machine, and you finally see it for what it really is. And it's just so terrible to get that kind of perspective on yourself, you know? You know what I mean? Actually, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Some babe. No, I'm already high. I smoked up Ashley at work. Oh. How's she doing? I'm worried about her. She's just been so withdrawn lately, and I really wish I could get her to speak at this rally. Maybe that would just make things worse. Well, uh, you should bring her around here more often. Us freaks will do her good. Yeah. Sure you don't want a little bit more? You know how ditzy I get when I smoke too much. But I love it when you get all ditzy. What? I'm sorry, I can't help it. My mom was a ditz. <laughs> Are you sure I can't convince you to speak? Yeah. Must be Ashley. Phil and I were best friends since boot camp. I wanted to come by and pay my respects. He really loved you. Thank you. You look familiar. Maybe. How long are you here for? Two weeks. That's all. I uh, <clears throat> came by here to give you these. wanted me to make sure you had him. How did he die? Honorably. Serving his country. Listen, I know this might be a strange question to ask, but can you please tell me anything else? 
You don't want to know anymore. I do. No, you don't. Please. When he died, they gave me a box of 240 machine gun rounds, stained with his blood. They told me to go use them, hoping that it would play on my rage on the fact that my friend just got killed in an ambush. Four months ago, I lost my boyfriend, Phil. He was a private. He died in combat. Phil was killed August 30th, two days before our fifth anniversary. We'd been dating since my freshman year of high school. For the entirety of my transition into adulthood, Phil was my other half. I thought it'd be that way for the rest of my life. Phil was a good person, this I know with all my heart. But as much as I wish otherwise, and as much as it would ease the pain of his death, Phil did not die a hero. There is nothing heroic, noble, or at all necessary about this invasion. Worse, not only was his death in vain, but I know Phil must have contributed to the suffering on the other side. It is with no consolation, but rather with tremendous guilt and sadness that I recognize Phil was responsible for putting someone else in the state of pain and loss I've lived in for the past half year. We're over there killing parents, children, and loved ones, destroying families, leaving them heartbroken and alone, and for what? For a meaningless, endless war based on lies and profit? And here at home, how do we react? We don't watch the carnage on TV or even think about it much at all. No. We sit in front of our screens and shoot endlessly, slaughtering virtual enemies until we are completely numb to what that action really means. Training how to kill. Disconnecting the fact that our gunshots and our bombs murder real life humans. People. People wrongly taken from this world and from their loved ones. And for the rest of my life, I and countless others on both sides of this needless conflict will be testament to that. shots and our bombs murder real life humans. People. People wrongly taken from this world and from their loved ones. For the rest of my life, I and countless others on both sides of this needless conflict will be testament to that. Ashley? Hi, my name is Amber Jones.
I mean, personally, I feel really sorry for the girl. I really do. You know? Sorry for her? What is this? I've never seen grieving that makes you take off your clothes. I mean, oh. oh, come on now. You can't put that on her. I mean, look at the society we live in. I mean, our culture is just totally overset. A sex size room? It's preying on her vulnerability. She lost her boyfriend. I mean, come on. Come on in. Hey, Ashley. I'm sorry. I, I don't have anywhere else to go. Everyone knows. My parents. Oh, Everyone knows. Everyone fucking knows. I've actually got a wonderful opportunity here, Ashley. The whole world is listening to you. I just want everyone to stop talking about it. And I just want everyone to leave me alone. Do you think I could stay here for a little? <laughs> oh, Ashley, I just want to tell you that you are awesome. What you did for the movement, fucking brilliant. Thanks. I am so sick of all those people in the news saying, how could someone do that? How could someone dishonor their dead boyfriend by making a porno? Well, fuck them. They have no idea what it's like to be over here. They have no idea what it's like to be a soldier. We bleed and fight and kill for your lies. Porn's one of the few comforts we have. So just shut the fuck up. Because even if Ashley had never given that speech, she's done more for the troops than any of you. Combination so terrible, I'd never even imagined it. A terrorist tour, a self-promoting slut, using the death of a boyfriend, a soldier, a hero, to promote her porn career, and using her body, a sweet, nubile body, the kind of body American soldiers fight for, to promote the terrorist agenda.